So Hashem tells us that if you look for me, you'll find me. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, he says, if you look for me, you'll find me. If you look for me with all of your heart and all of your soul. If someone really is looking for the truth, Hashem is going to make sure you find it. But you can't look for it like you look for a second pair of keys. You look five minutes, I didn't find no cow, just use the first one. He said, if you look for me with all of your heart and all of your soul, if you're really looking for the truth, you'll find me, he says. But he also says in the Torah that when we don't look for him, if you treat him with casualness, you like he's one of your friends from the bar. You call him, not call him, worship him, not worship him, listen to him, not listen to him, like you do khofshi, do whatever you want. Then we get punished twice. One for not doing, and one for treating him like he's one of our friends. This is both in Parashat Kitavo and Parashat Bechukotai. So never think that I'm making up anything that I'm telling you. I bring all these books to every lecture because number one, I really don't know what I'm going to say before the lecture, so I'm hoping the books are going to give me some siyat dishmaya. And number two, usually people have questions and say, oh really, where is that written? So I can give them a book and show them, look, don't think that I, that I said it. God said it. It's written in the book. I, I wasn't, Hashem didn't ask me for permission before he wrote these books. Have a seat. So, when I treated Hashem with casualness and I said that the business world was a dominating force in my life, eventually the time came for Hashem to come to me and wake me up. And wake up it was. Seven years of fighting for my life both health-wise, financial-wise, and everything else in between. The CDs behind you, the CD number one and CD number two, from Wall Street to the Western Wall, tell the story. On CD number two, it's the first track. It's a, Baruch uh, Hashem, a very popular lecture, very motivating to a lot of people, but also has a lot of musar and a lot of lessons we could all apply to our life, whether it's somebody fighting a health battle, somebody having problems with emuna, somebody having problems with financial issues, somebody intermarried, it applies in so many different ways because Mamash, Baruch Hashem, Hashem put us through a nice, specialized, customized genom in this world that we were able to experience many nice things. But Ishtabak Shem Olaad eventually had mercy on us and He woke us up and we saw the truth and Baruch Hashem, you see us today. So, once I saw the truth, everything became meaningless. And that's the one thing, oh Chabak, that's the one thing that people have a hard time understanding when they ask me, Wait a minute. You were making so much money on Wall Street. You were doing this. You were doing that. Why don't you stay on Wall Street? Okay, be religious. Keep Shabbat. Keep mitzvot. But go back to making your two, three hundred thousand dollars a month. What are you going? What do you have to give lectures for free for? And live off of staka. Why? There's two reasons. First reason is when you really see the truth for exactly what it is, you see Hashem's Torah for exactly what it is, at least at my level, that is not very high, but for where I stand, from my perspective, everything is meaningless. All the money in the world is meaningless, all the desires in the world are meaningless, everything is meaningless. Yes, you still have to eat, you still have to drink, you still have to live in this world, but the world that I lived in, the financial world, the stock market, the CNBC, the Bloomberg, the fame, the fortune, all that stuff became officially meaningless overnight. Because you saw it's material. Okay, so what am I going to invest? Another 70 years in his money, in his fame, in the employees, in the friends, in the you know, enemies, in the politics, and all of this stuff. For what? I can't take any of it. Eventually you go, everybody, every one of us is going to become dust. The worms are going to eat us. The maggots are going to take whatever is left. The real us, the neshama, goes to the real world. You can't take the money with you. Can't take the car with you. You can't take the apartment on the 35th floor for three and a half million dollars with you. You can't. It stays here. So I figured, what am I going to invest in this stuff that I can't take with me? So it became meaningless. Second reason is that the Hashem, each one of us has a gift. Hashem gave me a gift of God. He gave me the ability to speak and think a little bit differently. And I also like to argue. So these are a good combination for giving lectures. So, Hashem, I still, the way I looked at it, and my Rav told me this as well, both Rav Ephraim and, uh, from Jerusalem and Rav Mizrahi, which I'm sure many of you know, 
Hashem needs more Jews. Businessmen, he has plenty. This doesn't mean that businessmen are bad, but Hashem, we need businessmen to fund all of this. But we don't have enough people telling the truth. So, I threw my hat into the equation and I hope that Hashem gives me siyat bishmaya to help people do tshuva. In the last couple of years, hundreds of people have been doing tshuva, converting, doing all types of things. People that mamash came to me, atheists, had orthodox weddings eight months later. With mechitza, with no likudin, no nothing. Mamash, like 100%, like a frum person. You would think this person is from from birth. Other people converting, other people becoming much more religious. One guy wanted to force his wife to have an abortion. A few months later, Baruch Hashem, he's full-time in a kolel. Full-time in a kolel. Has nothing to do with me, though. It's not me. Don't think it's me. Don't give me the credit. So this, Torah, you read it, you do the same thing. Same Torah. Just that no one reads the whole Torah. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.